maple bowl being turned on a lathe somewhere in a small carriage shack in Oakland, California. In this episode of The Naked Turner, I'll be showing you how to colorize an ordinarily plain figured maple bowl into something that might just be a little more special. So, don't adjust your horizontal or your vertical. We have control. Just sit back and watch as you enter the Twilight Zone. <laughs> this episode I'm not going to be showing you a lot of the turning process but what I am going to show you is how to make these bowls a little more interesting using some color. The most important thing about turning is being safe so always remember to read, understand, and follow all the safety procedures for any tool you're using. Most importantly protect your eyes and face. What I like to do is I have this set at a good size for the radius that will give me the appropriate diameter for my scrolling draw chuck. I just do that. That gives me a mark there. And then I go maybe a tiny bit past that. That's a fairly tight fit. So um, that just helps me. I don't have to sneak up on anything. Then I know that's right where I want to go to. I'm using several different tools to refine and define the bottom side of this bowl and prep it for the colorization process. So what I'm doing now is I'm prepping this surface. I have it sanded down to 400 grit and now I'm taking and putting a little denatured alcohol on the surface and that's going to stand the grain up again here a little bit. Come back in with some more 400, just lightly sand in reverse. Just be nibbing those little pieces of, of wood that stood up. Okay, so here I have it spinning down at 180 RPM and what I'm doing is I have this old this old continuous ink system. I'm going to be taking these dyes from this continuous ink system starting with the yellow and applying that to the outside edge of this bowl. A little bit of water on my brush and just get it a little bit moist first. Get these colors to flow on here. Okay. I'm just giving a full coat of yellow over the whole bottom side here. Like I said, I'm going to be turning this into, hopefully, if everything works out, a Warriors-inspired bowl. Oakland, Golden State Warriors. Go Dubs. Making sure I'm getting a full coating everywhere. Putting an even coat. Oftentimes it might take a couple, uh, a couple going overs there, or goings over, and just let it run slow so it's not spattering all this stuff all over you. 
I'm applying more yellow to make sure I have full saturation over the bottom of this bowl. Okay, so now, let's get that out of the way. Now I've got a couple coats of the yellow on and it's dried up. Now I'm just doing a little denibbing because it does raise the grain a little again. A little bit of denibbing and removing of some of the excess on top of the surface here. Alright, 
So I forgot to mention, I'm wearing uh, blue gloves, nitrile gloves right now, and um, I don't usually condone the use of gloves on the lathe unless they are fingerless, extremely tight-fitting gloves, and you're mainly only wearing them when you're doing the roughing process so as not to get any large splinters or burns from the wood that comes off fairly hot sometimes. So I am wearing gloves because the last couple times I did this colorizing process, my hands got extremely dirty with all the different colors. Alright, so I have the bowl turned around. I am going to, I've, I've probably turned it around a little too quickly. The back side probably should have had a little bit more time to cure. Um, <clears throat> but in the interest of getting this video done, I decided to flip it around a little quicker than I might normally. Um, hopefully that uh, last coat of lacquer, which was the third coat of lacquer, should um, stand up in there. Hopefully everything's not too wet, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, safety gear on, and we'll turn out the inside of this bowl. So now, I have this sanded up to 400 grit. Feels really nice. I'm just noticing one thing now I missed. This is very good right here. tiny little spot. Let me check that in. I'm going to do a little more sanding right there. Always double check. I'm going to put a little denatured out here on this edge. Does a couple things. Gets rid of the dust. Raises the grain again. Alright. I'll let that dry for a second. Give that a feel. Feels real good. you have a clean piece of rag without any yellow contaminants on it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to come in, I'm going to choose the dark blue because I'm going for uh, Golden State Warriors gold and blue. I'm going to choose the dark blue, bring my speed all the way down. It out right here. And try not to get too much extra on it because I don't want it to bleed in to the yellow and create a green. One of my subscribers, uh, Jerry, he wants me to try to do a tie dye, and I have a couple ideas on how to do that by setting up a lazy Susan on here with something like this driving a lazy Susan in a circle. So I'd have uh, used my lathe as a drive wheel, essentially, for a Lazy Susan, and then try some spin art. But I did a little test just on the Lazy Susan the other day, and it gets real muddy. The colors get really muddy real fast, unless you kind of keep them single colors or additive colors, and you're just trying to create one color. But if you kind of put a bunch, too many um, colors as they're spinning or crossing each other, it just gets real muddy real quick on the wood because it absorbs so much as you can see like I'm getting a very deep blue here with just a little bit of ink. Alright, let's give it a stop for a second, take a look at it. Alright, that's looking really good. I've got a spot out here. It still needs some coverage. So 
I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, here's a little different angle of it, and in a second, once I sand it and get some clear on it, hopefully you'll start seeing some of this figuring sort of pop. I uh, just wanted to give you a new angle, though. Okay, so now, I'll just put a little bit more out here on the edge. Now I'm just denibbing. I'm going to bring up the speed because I want to denib just a little bit faster. Yeah, that should have it now. See how that looks. Okay, that looks real nice. I'm going to just let it dry out a little bit here. Get a tiny bit more denibbing with some speed. It will help dry it out. Just being careful to not remove too much of the glue. ready. Okay, closing up my glue. And speed way down. And then coming in with the lacquer. You should see this start popping a little bit here. Okay, that's a good first coat. Directing some air in its direction. Alright, so hopefully you can, yeah, it looks like it's showing up here on my little screen, my tiny little screen. It looks like you're getting to see some of the, the blue chapoyance. Alright, hope you're enjoying that. Um, I'm going to let this dry put a couple more coats with denibbing in between and then I'll check back in with you as I start to hollow this piece out. Alright so once again I was trying to rush this uh, process a little bit and I got a bad coat of lacquer so now what I'm doing is a little bit of water and some quadruple lot steel wool. Just trying to sand away part of a mistake I got. Well, not really sand away, but a braid away. Sort of polish with steel wool and water. Because if you don't use the water, the lacquer will uh, heat up and turn into a sticky polymer, or well, a sticky substance, and uh, doesn't like to be sanded very well like that. So trying to remove some of this mistake right now by doing this. Let's we'll see if it's working. It looks like it is working. The only thing is it's taking a little bit of my color away too. I'm trying to do a Warriors Golden State Warriors bowl. So turning the speed down Going back in with a little bit of color. And this should only take one quick pass in order to get me back to where I want to be. And there it is. Okay. Taking away the excess. small notch in here with my narrow parting tool right around the outer edge of this bowl and now I'm going to burn a little line into that. Alright, so now hopefully
hopefully you can see that I've burnt in this really fine, less than a sixteenth of an inch thick little line here. And uh, that kind of helps define the top from the bottom. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the blue down to that black line there. Alright, so I decided to widen that because it looked pretty cool, but it was a little too narrow. So now I'm, I widened it a little bit and I'm reburning. Trying to burn down inside of there into two narrow parts there. And I think I just got it. Alright, I like that edge of the maple down inside here of the yellow. I'm going to go back in a little bit of yellow just on that edge and get rid of that. So, I've gotten it to a point now where I like the, the gap, and I have the yellow around that inside edge, and I'm really liking it. So, now I've just let it dry up. I'm going to put a little bit of lacquer on it, and then I'll check back in with you. Okay, so I'm getting ready to hollow this out. Everything's nice. I've got it. Everything's dry. The colors look good. Saturation is nice getting some good fire from the piece and now I'm just going to turn the middle of the bowl out. Got to be careful because it's pretty shallow and I have a I'm using my bowl gouge and I'm just kind of coming up to that edge. Alright, hopefully this will be a little bit better. I think I got it sharpened up there. And yeah, it looks like you'll be able to see here. There we go. another episode of The Naked Turner. I hope you enjoyed taking a trip into the coloring twilight zone on this bowl. Maple, some blue printer ink, some yellow printer ink, a wire burning tool, and a couple tools and you can make a bowl like this. Uh, let me pull it off here. Um, finished Warriors California Golden State Warriors Bowl. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share this video if you'd be so kind. Make a comment and uh, safe turning. Go Warriors. I'll try to take some stills tomorrow when the light's better.